professor is calling on a student and the student has an Israeli accent and the professor says, oh, are you Israeli? And the student says, yes. He says, did you fight in the IDF? He says, yes. Well, you can't speak up in my class unless you're willing to publicly acknowledge that you committed war crimes. That happens in a classroom. Uh, I speak at, at, at uh, Johns Hopkins University a couple of years ago. Students protest saying I was harassing them, harassing them, that's a word, by my silence, by not acknowledging that Israel commits war crimes and genocide. That's the newest form of uh, harassment. Um, if a teacher would dare to say anything pro-Israel, he's denying students safe spaces. So safe spaces on college campuses today are reserved for everybody but Jews and Zionists. There's no room for safe places. By the way, I don't believe in safe places intellectually on any campus. When I taught for 50 years, I told my students on day one, I am gonna challenge every single view that you hold dear. That's what we do at universities. We challenge you, we make you think. We make you think for yourself. You might get upset, but that's the cost of coming to university. There's no safe place from an intellectual challenge at a university. Um, obviously, if you want a completely safe place, I was going to say you go to a, a, a school that comports with your religious views. If you're a fundamentalist Christian, you go to Liberty University. You go to Truro College if you are an Orthodox Jew and you don't want to hear. But even in Truro College, you hear conflicting views. Certainly at Yeshiva University, you hear conflicting views. And most certainly at Brandeis University, you hear conflicting views. Uh, a few years ago, I was. Um, asked by the president of Brandeis University whether I would be willing to accept an honorary doctorate. And I said, oh, sure, I would be honored. Called me back about two weeks later and said, sorry, but faculty have decided that they would marshal a protest at graduation if you were to get an honorary doctorate because you're a Zionist. And uh, the idea, and, and he said, you understand, graduations are for the students, not for you, not for me, so we don't want disruption. Imagine the founders of Brandeis University being told that a Zionist cannot get an honorary degree at Brandeis. Bishop Tutu can. He's an anti-Semite. Um, uh, uh, the playwright, Kirshner, great playwright, who wrote uh, 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 Angels in America, but who said it would have been better if Israel had never been established, he can get an honorary doctorate, but a Zionist can't get an honorary doctorate at Brandeis University today. It is totally shocking. Um, what goes on. Not only are there restrictions on free speech today at university campuses, but there's a complete double standard. The restrictions on free speech go one way, just one way. It's okay to disrupt pro-Israel speakers because that's, quote, hate speech. But if you even try to protest against anti-Israel speakers, that's interfering with free speech rights. And so it's free speech for me, but not for thee which is common today on university campuses. I wrote an article just yesterday in the London Times supplement about fake news. Um, and it's the origin of fake news, Holocaust denial. That's the ultimate in fake news, fake history, Holocaust denial. And in the article, I go through the history of Holocaust denial and set out what I think are the rules for universities that no teacher should be able to teach that in the classroom. But teachers are allowed to say whatever they want outside the classroom. Students are allowed to say whatever they want outside the classroom. How should the media deal with all of these things? I tell an interesting story in the article about a case I had about 10 or 15 years ago. A fellow professor at Harvard, he was a professor of psychiatry at the medical school, and very eminent, very eminent man, had done uh, research for about five years on very healthy people who had one delusion. They believed they had been visited by space aliens. And he literally provided psychiatric care for five or more years only to healthy people who went to work every day, had happy marriages, had good kids, but they had this one delusion. They believed they had been visited by space aliens. And he wrote a book about it and he said, look, here, here are the possibilities. Number one, it's possible that the statistical and diagnostic manual of the American Psychiatric Association is wrong, that you can have a singular delusion and not be mentally ill in other ways, because these people have no other symptoms. And then he went through another option, and then he said, option four, maybe it's true. <laughs> oh boy. 